Every month, Jane Street, a hedge fund in New York, puts a new puzzle up onto their website. The users have a month to finish it. I'm gonna tell you how I solved the problem, and you can go see my name on the leaderboard if you want to. The general end question is how many ways can we create a shape with the area of 32 within this seven by seven grid? Now, it gets a little bit complicated because this shape needs to be one single unified shape where the outsides of the shape are these weird sort of arcs. These arcs are basically the corners of a circle. See in that top left shape, it has an area of 4 minus pi. The way that they got that area is basically by inscribing a circle inside of a square. If you take the area of that square, assuming the units are one each, then the area of that square is four. For the area of the circle, pi r squared is pi multiplied by r squared, r being one. So just pi. The area enclosed by one of those tiny little arches just within that square is four minus pi divided by four. You can basically use that arch to enclose a big chunk of the square or a small chunk of the square. So you can see in that first example, it encloses a small chunk of the square, or you could have it enclose the larger part. If you add up the small portion sectioned off by the arch plus the bigger portion sectioned off by the arch, that would be one, right? That would just be the full square. If you look at that bottom shape, they basically give us this shape that is an area of six. The way that they're getting that, taking those two middle squares in the center of the shape. However, we also need to add up four of the big arch areas and four of the small arch areas and that gives us an additional area of four and no matter how you orientate this final shape of ours it's going to need to have an equal amount of small arch areas and big arch areas because you can't create a whole number using a bunch of small arch areas added together or a bunch of big arch areas i learned was how big of a shape we can actually have in terms of area within this seven by seven grid if you draw it out you're basically only able to get an area of 36 this is sort of the maximum size or the maximum area a shape can be and so we're looking for a shape a little bit smaller than that but we know that it's going to be pretty close to the maximum size once i drew that out though one thing became kind of apparent was that these circle chunks the the line that you draw is basically traveling diagonally across one of the squares so what i did to simplify this it's really difficult to try to spatially visualize all these different combinations of just these circle chunks and think about how you're going to derive an answer to this problem it's really difficult i simplified it heavily by using just straight diagonal lines and just dividing straight down the middle of these squares. When I did that, I began to like learn a couple things. The first thing in this sort of diagonal drawing to make things a little bit easier, each section of this of this shape can kind of be looked at as a square, at least for now. We need, do need to remember that the circle edges our circle edges, so it's not going to be a square ultimately, but for now we can think about each of these sections of this big shape as a square. And when we do that, the biggest possible shape is 36 and we need an end area of 32. We basically know that we need to have this original largest shape and then remove two squares from it. The reason for two is because each one of those squares has four chunks of diagonal area. Each one of those diagonal area chunks is half a square unit of area. So four of them equals two. We need to subtract four from our area to get from 36 to 32. We basically have this shape of 18 squares and we need to remove two squares. We needed to basically think about how many possible ways could we remove two squares from this shape. If we count the outside of the shape, basically how many squares are on the outside edges of the shape, we count 10. And so for the first square we remove, we need to remove one of those outer squares because our shape can't have like holes in the middle. It needs to be completely connected to each other. We know we're going to need to remove a box from the outside first, and then we're going to need to remove another box. Now, technically speaking, when we remove that first box from the outside, it opens us up to another box we could remove from this new new edge of the shape that we create once we remove that first box, but let's ignore that for now. For now, let's just say that we remove two squares from the outside. So we have 10 options of squares to remove, and we remove two of them, so we can think of that as 10 choose two. That choose is basically a little bit of a, I don't know, a probability term. 10 choose two is basically how many different ways we can uh, take two squares from this very outside of this, uh, of this shape. Now, if I remember correctly, I think that comes out to 45. Um, yeah, yeah, because it's basically uh, 90 over 2. All right. However, we do need to think about the other ways we can remove two squares from this shape. Another way we can do that is basically by removing an, an inner square that becomes the new edge after we remove that first square. Looking at this, though, I went through all the different combinations of this, and there's only 10 possibilities here, because every time we remove an outer square, it only allows us one possible additional square to remove, so that adds 10 extra possibilities. 
with those 10 extra possibilities plus the original 45 from 10 choose 2, we have 55 different possibilities. Now, these are basically 55 different potential shapes we have of, of what this could look like. But we're not done because we need to think about the edges and how many different ways these edges can orientate themselves. We need to think about the fact that each one of these edges is actually this that weird sort of circle shape. And because of that, the fact that it's covered in circle shapes and that, you know, if we have a shape that has 20 edges, it's gonna have 10 big circle shapes and 10 small circle shapes. There's gonna be a many, many, many different ways to orientate those small and big circle shapes. It's basically gonna be 20 choose 10, which is a pretty big number. And that's gonna be unique for every single one of those 55 shapes. First step of doing that is basically, we need to count how many edges there are for each one of these shapes. In those 55 different ways of removing two squares, each one of those shapes is gonna have uh, a slightly different amount of edges. It's it, it ranges from like, I think like 18 to 24, so it doesn't range too much, and a lot of them are overlapping, but I went through all those 55 combinations, counted how many edges were in each one. From there, I was basically able to know our multiplication factors, and I need to count how many instances for each of those. We can set up an equation where we multiply the number of final shapes with X amount of edges and multiply that by the amount of times it occurs, multiplying it by its total edge number, choose its total edge number over two, because we know that half of the edges will be the big circle and half will be the small circle. So we can set up an equation like this, let's say, that gets us pretty close to the answer, but the last thing we need to account for, we basically started off by drawing those squares, just using these diagonal lines in a seven by seven grid. And if you notice the shape, it basically gets really, really close to the corners in the bottom left and the top right. But that's not the only way it could happen. I mean, this this seven by seven grid is obviously symmetrical. And so if we orientate the shape a little bit differently, we get a whole new set of variations that could occur. and. There's basically just one other way to do this. You know, instead of having it go really close from the bottom left to the top right, it's gonna go really close to the edge from the top left to the bottom right. That's a pretty easy calculation though. It just basically just doubles the amount of, uh, of possibilities we need to account for. That big equation we have with, uh, I think like four or five different shoes multiplications. We basically just get the answer to that, which I think ends up being around 44 million something something, and multiply it by two, and, and we get our final answer of 89 million something something. Hopefully I've uh, edited diagrams while I'm talking to make this a lot more simple to understand. Um, yeah, see you next time.